All right, so this morning I'm going to talk to you about how to use and contribute to Lenaro's Android platform. So we're going to do pretty much a demo of how to get an image and how to work with a review site and kind of just go through the mechanics of everything so that people can, people can work with uh, Lenaro's Android. Um, all week long, I've kind of been saying how easy it is to actually get started, and so Today I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that. So, what I have here is one of our setups. We've got uh, we've got Panda board here. It's got an SD card in it. I'll take that out here. My backup SD card. <laughs> um, we got a keyboard, mouse. We've got a uh, serial to USB converter for the. For the serial port output, we got an HDMI monitor, and um, that's kind of the base setup for the target. For the for programming the SD card, what we've got is we've got uh, an SD card programmer, and we're going to plug into our laptop here. And what we're best basically going to do is we're going to take and we're going to go and get the pre-built images. And we're going to program them on the SD card, plug the SD card in, and we'll be ready to go. So, pretty simple. What I've done is I've actually written up a little tutorial on how to do all of this at Embedded Linux, uh, elinux.org. And I've got it brought it up here, so we're kind of go through the tutorial as we're, or we'll go through it on, on, on the screen. Here, uh, here today. So I put this under the Android portal tutorials and it's called From Unboxing Panda. From Unboxing to Apps. So this is this is kind of a tutorial assuming that it, you're not really an embedded developer, you just want to do app development, for example, and you want to do app development on Panda or one of the other low-cost boards that we support, because we support a few different low-cost boards, IMX53, Origin, Panda, and uh, Snowball. So what makes Lenar's development environment unique is, unlike a phone where you don't have control over the platform you're running on, with Lenaro's Android platform, you have complete control over the platform that you're running on. In fact, you can take and compile a platform completely from source. What this means is that you can put development tools on and other things that you might have in a traditional Linux system onto an Android system, making your life and your development life easier. We have over the last few months and will continue to put standard development tools with our images in our pre-build, with our pre-build images. So one example of that is BusyBox, which people tend to have to put on after the fact. We have it already integrated, and in fact, we built BusyBox from source, so if you want to make BusyBox changes, you can, you can do that. In the future, we'll be putting Perf, uh, Valgrind, and, uh, and other tools that, uh, that you'll find on a more traditional Linux system. So here we see we have the setup that you generally have. One thing that always kind of drives me crazy is you guys got to get around for the information of what kind of power supply you need. So you need a uh, 5 volt, 2 amp power supply. And a five, incidentally, a 5 volt 2 amp power supply will work with all of our low cost boards. So that's great. So we'll unpack the fan board, get everything hooked up. We're going to hook up our serial port here to our USB port. Bring up a our 
our serial, we thought we'd come by serial. We thought we won't get ahead of ourselves. All right. So we have also have our SD card programmer. Now I've found that having a discrete SD card hole, our SD card programmer is actually better than using the one that's built into my laptop. Um, we use a tool called Lenaro Android uh, Media Create. And Lenaro Android Media Create can have issues in, at times, and those issues can cause the, your, your laptop to actually hang. We have bugs filed from the majority of those issues, um, but if you use one of these external SD, SD card programmers, then those issues don't seem to bite you. So just a, just a little point. So plug that in. And take, we're going to insert our SD card. And then really only the, the only Linux thing you got to do is type D message. When you type D message, oh, mackerel, look at the size of that bug. <laughs> it's like, it's huge. Anyway, you're going to type D message, and after you plug in your SD card, you're going to see how, um, how Linux actually enumerates it, so it puts it at uh, SDC. When you have a new card like this, clean out of the package, you're going to only see one partition on it, SDC1. Incidentally, Lenaro Android Media Create will blow away your whole SD card. So if you have your family photos on this SD card or other things that you don't want nuked, like Avatar that you used to or that you were watching on the way over on the flight, it's gone. <laughs> we do warn you. So, now that we have our SD card, we kind of plug everything in, we're ready to go. We're going to go to android-build.lenaro.org. This is an issue we're working through. <laughs> we have a bug file here. All right. So, what you see here on the uh, Lenaro Android Build Services, our list of builds. So, we have Essentially what happens is, is we do a build and we put it at the top of the list. These are all of our builds. It's not, if you don't know what you're looking at, it can be very confusing. It can be very confusing. So the best thing to do right now is to actually pop on to IRC, uh, if, you're, if you're curious, and ask, for example, what build is best for me? I have an IMX53 board, I have a Panda board, what build should I use? We, we see here that we have, we have a tracking panda build. With, that's all it says, tracking panda. Here we have a tracking panda 11.10 release, and it's failed. Now it hasn't actually failed, but there's a bug in our Lava implementation where if Lava doesn't actually run on the image automatically, it'll say that the whole build failed, which is correct. But the build actually is passed, and we've verified that in our uh, test matrix. So we'll be brave, and we'll use staging panda 11.10 release, which is our last release. We'll put it on. Can you describe just quickly the difference? Yep. Good question, Andy. <laughs> so we found it useful. After they kind of start using our builds, they say things like, well, I want to use a stable kernel, or I want to use a tip kernel, or I want to use the latest and greatest just open source without any additional patches. And so what we've done is we've created naming conventions for these builds that allow us to disambiguate those. So a tracking build, for example, tracking dash web, you know, and uh, IMX53, is a build that is tracking Linus head. And we have, we as, you know, uh, we, Lenaro, have actually rebased the BSP for that build on top of Linus head. For our staging builds, our staging builds use our Linux Lenaro kernel. 
And our Linux Lunaro kernel is, has been our stable kernel. So that's the, the idea is that I can always boot up on a stable kernel, do my development. Without a staging or tracking or landing designation, if it's just Panda, that's the upstream though. So that's what you, that's the support you would get if you went, just went to kernel.org and said, make Android underscore OMAP4 underscore config. And you get a kernel and that's the support. So the nice thing about this is, is that you can see the support kind of across the map, across the board. And by, by so one thing I, I should back up and say is that with staging and tracking, those include the enablement patches. Whereas when you just do the upstream build, the upstream build has no enablement patches, just the upstream. So it's gonna be less featured, obviously. Well, not ex actually not obviously, it should be the same feature set, and that's of course what we're working towards. So when we go here, we see Lenaro Android Build Service. And what Lenaro Android Build Service does is it gives us a gives us all the information that we need to actually use the build. It says where this build came from. Um, where, you know, it, it gives us this um, kind of canonical, canonical link, which is the version of this build that got done. So this was the fourth version. Um, every month we cut a release candidate about once a week across all the targets, and we test all the targets once a week. Anything that isn't working, we either update a bug or file a bug. At this point, we have a pretty good idea of what all the bugs are, so we're just updating bugs now. And we then see and track as those bugs get finished, we're able to see that come in. If anything new pops up with our RC cadence, we're able to actually file a bug and get that bug solved within that cycle. So that's why we do the RCs as, as often as we do. You can see the kernel version, the Android version, and the toolchain version. So this incidentally is using our tip toolchain, it's using Linux version 3.0.4 plus and Android 2.3.5. So currently, we are actually upgrading 2.3.7 while we twiddle our thumbs and wait for ice cream sandwich. <laughs> but incidentally, 2.3.5 and 2.3.7 are extremely useful baselines for doing all sorts of work. Um, ice cream sandwich will come in and it'll be, have more features, so on and so forth, but 2.3.7 is still a great development environment for doing all sorts of things and a great production environment for, for building products out of it. So I've talked before about the five commands you need to get running. Five commands are three wgits, a bizarre pool of Lenaro image tools, and a Lenaro Android media create call. So we won't download the we won't download these. Um, but we will do the Lenaro image tool step. Although, you know what? We'll, let, let's give it a go. It can always fail. I have a pretty good connection here. So, we'll make a directory. I'll attempt with this. Try Lenaro. Now, this is a little bit. Zach, why did you take the bazaar version of, um, of Lenaro uh, Media Create Tools? Uh, can we use the one in, on Eric, for example? Is it re recent enough? That's actually a really good question. So early on, when we were getting, we were getting Android kind of sorted out, the version in Oneric was always out of date, and it didn't work. As a rule in Android, we always work off of TIT. We find it's actually more useful to always just track the tip of whatever we're working on and fix things when they break. So we pull the tip of Lenaro Android Media Create and Lenaro Image Tools, and we do that so that you can have the latest and greatest up to the minute. That, that also means is that sometimes it can be a little unstable. <laughs> but the good thing is, is if it's unstable, you, need, you should file a bug, and that's the Android workflow. Fix it, get it done. You can always roll back to a different version of the, of 
when our Android media create and try to you know back up until you find a version that works for you. In practice, I haven't found too many instances where the tip didn't just work. Now, over the last couple of after the last over the last two weeks, it, we have had a couple of issues, but <laughs> um, but we'll go. We'll, we'll see how we do here. So we boot. We got the boot dot. Uh, we got the boot, uh, boot image. Unlike, uh, so if you're, if you're familiar with Android development, you'll know that Android breaks down its system into partitions, and there's a boot partition, and a system partition, and a user data partition, and a recovery partition, and various other things as device manufacturers see fit. It's usually something like system.img, and Usually you fast boot the, the unit. Um, because of how Lenaro does its builds and the fact that it relies on solutions that have been, have been upstreamed or are going to be upstreamed, <coughs> we actually don't use fast boot in U-boot because it's not in U-boot. There are, there, are, there are programs and there, there is a there is a push to get a fast boot, either fast boot as it currently sits, or a fast boot compatible, um, fast boot compatible U boot going, so that we can work in a more standard Android manner. But this actually doesn't. This, this is not, this actually isn't too bad. So essentially, what we do is we we uh, gzip up or tar tarball up the uh, the three partitions, and those are the partitions that enter in our Android media. <coughs> So great, we've got our system dot tar. We'll get our last user data. And that's fast. Boom, done. We'll get our Lenaro image tools. So one of the one of the challenges that we have faced using, kind of working within Canonical and working with um, the open source and launchpad tools is that Android is by and large a Git based, um, uses Git to get all of its source code and, um, and basically work with the code. Uh, of course, launchpad Canonical is a bizarre uh, house, so you'll see both. Um, when, when you actually do a repo sync and you're actually building from source, uh, what you'll do is you'll you'll actually use Git completely. Um, where we where we need to, we actually will set up a bazaar to Git uh, bridge. So this is great. We're on four five six bazaar version. Now the real cool part: Lenaro image tools, Lenaro Android media create. So what we see here is we see um, that I've actually inputted it wrong. I pasted it in, which I'm sure other people have done. Remember before that I said when you typed the message that you saw it was on SDC, so we have to make sure we're typing the right one. And you can actually see here that it tells me, um, are you 100% sure on selecting that SDD? So we pass in. Dev SDC, we pass in Dev Panda, we pass in the system.tar, the user data.tar, and the boot.tar. We're just going to press code. And this time, are we sure we want to use SDC? Yes, I'm sure, absolutely. Now, this is the magic time. It'll either work or it won't. <laughs> if it doesn't, then we can, you can just, hopefully, you can just trust me and we'll. I'll, I'll, I'll do the switch on you, because I have one that's already been programmed. <laughs> it's, it's a little trick I learned from Steve Jobs. Always have the working system. Never rely on the network. <laughs> oh. oh, hey, 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 look at this. Oh, good, 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 good. So what this is doing is, if you've ever gone on like pandaboard.org or beagleboard.org or you know the various other community sites, what they'll have is they'll have some wiki buried somewhere down in the bowels of the of the 
of the community site that'll have some script that some guy wrote that basically does this job for you. And you look and look and look and look and look and dig. And then finally you find it and it basically does what you want. This is, we try to make as straightforward as possible. This is what you do. <laughs> And it's not infinitely, uh, it's not infinitely configurable, but the source is open, and people can can actually uh, take it and modify it to their heart's content. So this will just finish programming. So it's created created the partitions, um, unzipped the contents of the three of the three um, build artifacts into the SD card, and just finishing up. It's at, it's it's worth at this point to talk about SD cards. So Arn Bergman has actually done a fantastic job characterizing about 50 different uh, SD cards. And he's basically the SD card truth teller. So if you have an SD card and you're wondering what kind of performance you're going to get, you're wondering if it's really even the SD card that you think it is, he has a, he has a suite and set of programs that you can actually use to tell what kind of SD card you have and see what your performance is going to be. This is actually fairly crucial with these Android systems, especially on first boot. So if you take these images and you boot them up the first time and they're slow, it's because basically Android's booting up and it's writing all its default config to the SD card and it's basically, it's basically just filling in the, um, as, it, as it boots up, it's just filling in the universe that it's coming up on so that on the next boot, it can be fast. So if your first boot is slow, <coughs> just Bear with it, and, and it'll boot up OK. If you have a faster SD card, that effect won't be as bad. So great. We're done creating with our Android image on dev SDC. So no sync required. We'll rip the card out, and we'll plug the card into our Panda. I'm going to boot this one up just to show you, just to, just to, just to do it. But I'm going to then boot this one up because this one's got some cool, some cool stuff on it that we haven't integrated into the build. So it's pretty basic. Plug it in. You make sure that um, you're plugged into the right HDMI port, which is the one nearest the USB and Ethernet there. <laughs> You'll see our boot up screen, which looks a little bit weird. <laughs> Actually, know why this happens. Um, we just need to need to sort it out. Uh, kind of in a lower priority, higher priorities were getting Ethernet to work, getting uh, getting audio to work, <laughs> all sorts of other other enablements. And so the build comes up. This is actually pretty. So it's writing the SD card. Here we go. All done. So you can see here. Benchmarks. We have GeoMark 2, which we can run, which looks cool. We're working on improving the interface to GeoMark so that it presents frames per second and gives us an actual benchmark. Light OX benchmark, which we also have, which will run a variety of a variety of things. Sunspider, OpenGL, so on and so forth. So now you're here. You have your Android system. You're thinking to yourself, well, okay, this is cool. I don't really want to hack on the platform. <laughs> what I really want to do is, we've done all this bit. What I really want to do is load up the SDK and program some stuff. That's what I really want to do. So what, would it, what, what I got here is I've got my, I've got uh, my zero cable and we're going to hook it up to ADB. And first what we're going to do is we're going to actually install a new program 
on the unit over ADB. Very, very easy to do. Plug in our ADB cable, our USB cable. Oh, look at that slow up right. We're so Googleized that we're calling it an ADB cable. We plug in our USB cable and come on in here. I, I, I couldn't see it. Does it go to the uh, USB uh, device a port on your panda board? Oh, yes. So the USB, right. So the USB device on the panda board is right here, right next to the audio header. Oh, that's the OTG one, actually? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yep, no problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to install Angry Birds, because that's what So we just ADB install. And this actually isn't a great demo. Now that I couldn't think about it right now because uh, the ADB uh, daemon actually is uh, kind of slow at this point. Um, what I didn't actually, sorry, I should have brought up the mini comp port. Disable the suspend, suspend APK. Hopefully this will work. Oh, well, like I said, there's a bug. We'll unplug this. Plug it back in. You can see that actually now we're getting some ADB traffic. And this is why it's slow, incidentally, is we, um, we spew out all the ADB traffic to the Concord. <laughs> So now we have disable suspend, which actually helps us out a bit, especially for doing demos when we don't want the thing to suspend. And we click on it, and it's just great with one single button. And now we can use the unit and it'll stay up. So you're saying to yourself, Zach, that's really cool. But I still just want to use the SDK. <laughs> and I say, great, let's do that SDK thing. So, I have the SDK installed. In its own directory. And basically, we're going to use the instructions that are listed on the Android site for doing, for doing this installation. So, this is a standard Eclipse based um, Android development. Now I know what you Linux people are thinking, putting myself in the Linux people category. I don't need a GUI to do development. I don't need these wimpy tools. I'm going to do everything from the command line. Well, you have that option. And I've taken advantage of that option. 
But you know what? It's actually a pretty nice little tool. <laughs> it's all integrated, it all works, um, and you can go from not having an app to having an app in a matter of probably five minutes. <laughs> so, word to the Ubuntu guys who are starting to move down into the app market. If it's not this easy, it's not right. <laughs> and using Eclipse probably would be a cool thing. <laughs> so, this is that disable suspend that I had mentioned. This is, this is it. Um, and I won't give you guys a demo on, on how to use this necessarily, but I will come in here and what we'll do is we'll reinstall server because uh, Eclipse will come in and it'll start the AED server. Settings apps. Manage application. Apps. Application. Manage applications. There we are. Oh, it's failing because it's not, because it's still running. It won't kill it. So let's we'll stop our disable suspend. Install it over through the SDK. And we come in here and click do debug. All the things you can, all the things you can do with the phone. So that is pretty much going from unboxing to application development. A couple little hiccups on the road. So let's say, let's say you do have a couple little hiccups. Let's say it's not quite working. Um, one interesting little bug that Eclipse has is when you, when you try to upgrade Eclipse and you have the uh, ADB server running, um, it, it can actually hang Eclipse. So you, if you ever, if it ever asks you to upgrade or, or you're upgrading packages, you want to make sure that you ADB kill server before you do any of that business. Um, anyway, little little little, little tip. 
So yeah, let's say that you do have a problem. Come on into IRC. to our Lenaro Android channel. Uh -oh. And get help. So there's typically a Android guy or gal hanging out in the Lenaro Android and they can help you out with anything that you might run into. You can always send an email to Lenaro Android, um, the Lenaro Android mailing list or the Lenaro-dev mailing list. Or you can send an email directly to me. I'll always look at So basically, that is how to work with the pre-compiled images. Pretty easy to do. So I'll take a little bit of time here and we'll talk about getting source code, actually building from source. So everything you've seen here, all the images, you can actually build from source. The exact same things using the exact same tools. Build from source is fairly easy. There's a couple little things you want to you want to keep in mind. Nothing nothing too terrible. So make So, a couple of things. We have a basic form of, of our command here. A repo init, and you list the manifest, you list the branch you're interested in, and you list, um, well, now that Git is back up, you can, or Android, uh, Android source is back up, uh, repo will work, but while Android source was down, Lenaros was there. We kept the Android pulse beaten. People could get source always from us, and it worked. So, good job. <laughs> hey, Zach, you want to mention where you get the repo script from? Because sometimes it's uh, like the link wasn't on the Google web page, and it's, you, know, you can get it from Git. That's where it's usually easiest, but they don't really document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, to bootstrap repo, so repo is a funny program, right? Repo gets repo from repo. <laughs> so where do I get repo? <laughs> um, the easiest way to get repo is actually um, from the repo URL. So we actually we actually have it here. We bake it into the command. So we host repo. And this is exactly Android. This tracks the, the Android repo, so you can, you can rely on this. And to get repo, all you have to do is clone the repo git. And that's pretty much, if you don't have, so that, that's one way to get repo, clone the repo git. The other way to get repo is you can curl. Um, and for example, you can, um, here, you can see, this, so this is the standard Google. The new Google source is here, and you can get Google from, or repo from there. Um, but it's also in the Git, which is actually kind of useful um, if you ever forget and you don't have that link on you. That link's in my other pants. <laughs> it's like the second time I made that joke this time. It's still no laughs. So anyway, you can get, you can get the repo. Incidentally, I mean, repos are a pretty cool little program. It could use some, I mean, 
something that could use some more community involvement. It's basically a 4 each git. Um, hooks, a manifest hooks up into it. We'll, we'll look at that in here. Um, we'll do a, we'll do a, we'll actually check it out into, uh, do a repo in it here with our last, last couple of minutes. Move. So I'll actually use, I'll actually use the repo that I just downloaded to do this call. So for those who haven't done, um, haven't done this ever, haven't done this before, uh, oops. You do uh, when you want to get Android source code, you use repo. You repo init, and that basically that basically downloads the manifest into a dot repo directory that contains all of the gits and all of the branches of all of the gits, or contains all the gits and then all the gits you either are pulling, you can either pull from head or you can specify a particular commit or you can specify a particular branch. Um, using using the uh, manifest. So if we repo in it here, you can see that we're pulling in um, we're pulling actually in the manifest, which is in Git, and you can see all of our all of our tags that, that we've used here, and it's and it's pulling in repo itself, updating itself. So repo is initialized, and if you look, go you know, list all. There's a dot repo directory, which is different from the repo we just cloned. Keep that in mind. You cd into dot repo. You see manifest.xml, manifest.git, um, and if you actually do a list long, you can say that you can see that the manifest.xml, which is by this, the default that the script picks up is actually a soft link to the staging panda. And if you remember, that is what we specified here. And the reason why we do, why we actually have all these different manifests, we don't have just one manifest, is we haven't done the integration at the Android level to actually allow us to have one manifest at this point. But it's in the so you should have to pass M. You shouldn't actually have to pass B because everything should be on the master branch. You should just have to say repo init manifest and it should just work. But there are, you know, we have we have a couple of we have a couple of these things that you have to do. So it's keep worth keeping this in mind. Now once you repo init, then you repo sync. Then you go get coffee, and you go do <laughs> go take out the trash, <laughs> do whatever you need to do. Because this will take upwards of what I mean, an hour maybe. But it's a one-time thing. And then you can always repo sync once you have all these all these uh, gits. You can always repo sync again, and that's much much faster. So the initial pull is is big. Once it's all built. And we won't sit around and wait. Or once all, all once all the source gets downloaded. Oh, and uh, you need to do that on a 64-bit system. Oh yes, good point. Good point. Oh yeah. So um, it's, yeah, as as Andy mentions, um, Google has a pretty specific like environment that it needs to run in. Um, it actually will run in other distros. And um, Barrow, for example, runs this in. Uh, uh, Mandriva, uh, and he's successful at running this in, in Mandriva. Because uh, he's a Mandriva guy. Um, so, I have, so, I've already downloaded this at one point in my life. So here we have everything. If we go back to the build page, there's just one other thing I'll mention before we, before we finish up here. So on the build page, we have this line right here. 
toolchain URL. Toolchain URL is very important. You need to get this version of the toolchain. One of the things that sets Lunaro apart from its other and from other Androids is the fact that we do build against the tip GCC toolchain and we can switch it out. Typically Android will build off will build off of the built-in code sorcery based 4.4. To override this, you we actually don't we don't, don't integrate the toolchain into our build. We just we just specify it as kind of a sidecar thing. When we move to fully parameterized builds, this will be configurable and the kernel will be configurable from the command line. So that'll be cool. Then we probably won't even do these staging things anymore. You'll just say, I want this kernel, and it'll just build it and it'll leave the work or not. Um, yes, yes. Um, and, and, and oh, so good question. As part of the build, or as part of uh, so part of one of the elements that comes in from the manifest is the kernel, and so the whole system builds soup to nuts in one go. This is actually this is actually a cool thing. This is something I really like about Android, which is when I get the source code, I get everything in one swoop. I don't have to worry about digging around. I don't have to go to Yocto and build an embedded disk Linux distribution. I don't have to get packages. I don't have to do anything. I just repo sync and I'm done. Everything works. So that's that's actually a really nice thing from a development perspective. And this whole flow is is pretty much why Android is is so popular because it's just you're done, right? You repo sync, you boot it up, you can build, put your APK on it. You're pretty much out the door. So, um, so the other thing is, so once you get the toolchain URL, you actually need to download this, and you can just wget, and then it comes in as um, the Android. It basically comes in um, under the under the toolchain uh, as tar. You unzip it, and you specify it on, and then when you go to make. Looks a little complicated. A boot line, but and this is all documented incidentally on our website. But when you go to make, you basically just make target product panda board target tools prefix, and you pass in the prefix of the tool chain that it gets sunset in, and then specify boot tarball, system tarball, and user data tarball. Um, this actually uh, putting the tool chain in the path isn't needed. So uh, we, we can run this right now. I think I, think I have this. Oh no, I don't anymore. But I, I can I can do a real quick tar. So I'll take the tool chain. This is what Michael Hope's group works on. This is the latest and greatest GCC. This is you know this is as tip as you can get. in, which is supported, but seriously, it'll build in, uh, actually now it'll build in 30 minutes, because we're disabling JVM, the host JVM build on the, uh, on the build, so 30 minutes, that's pretty darn fast. It can take, minus J, just minus, or, you know, not paralyzing the build, it can take like eight hours, but then that's one time. So, those anyway. messages right there, those find areas that first show up, those just 
always happen. Right. Don't worry. Yep. Yeah, so this is just breaking along. So, that's it. If you just want to go by Yep, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Um, and if you want to rebuild one package, you just go into the, so a little aside, if you want to rebuild just a package, you can go into android.mk and figure out what the module name is and just pass that, and that'll just rebuild that one package, incidentally, which makes your life way faster. And then what you can, what the really, really fast, cool thing is, is when you do rebuild a package, you, if, you, if you use ADB sync, ADB sync the first time will sync all the packages down to the unit. When you recompile a package or whatever, you can type ADB sync again, and it will not only download the, re the new package that you got, but it'll download any of the other packages and follow the dependency chain. So if you rebuild an SO that has a dependency on another SO, you'll not only get the one SO, but you'll get the other SO. So here we're building the kernel. So that's it. Just out of curiosity, you mentioned that you like the build command and that it's on one of the keys. Uh huh. Is it um, obvious to support you guys? Yes. Let me let me let me let me show you. So we'll we'll end on a song here. <laughs> so you got Wiki platform Android. This is our Wiki. We yeah. have how to get the source code, build the source code. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very, very explicit kind of guy. <laughs> Here are the commands you need to run. Don't go looking around. <laughs> um, and and so we have our benchmarks and our, and our QA tests. Thank you. Thanks.